what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. So let's understand a bit about API. So if I was to ask who is an API, we would say that he is just a server or a waiter at a restaurant. So how to access an API? You need a documentation. You can never know how to use an API if you are not provided a document. This documentation could be either in a form of a website or a PDF form or Word document. Okay, so let's talk with an analogy. So think of a restaurant and a server. So we pretty much have the documentation in our mind of how to order at a restaurant, right? So you know what you need to ask. So we know the request which we will be making. So first one could be make an order or create an order. Second could be know the price of a dish or ingredients maybe. And the third could be ask for a bill. So you are not going to make any strange requests like can I get a t-shirt or can I get a car at a restaurant, right? Because you will confuse the waiter. And what's going to happen is because the API of the hotel only provides you food, so the waiter will tell you that this service is not possible. In the API's term, you will get an invalid or in status, network status, you might get 404. Whenever you see 404 on your screen, on your web page, that means that there is an API involved which is telling you this page isn't or doesn't exist. Okay, so let's dive a little deep into the API methods. There are four basic functions with an API and it's called CRUD. CRUD stands for create, read, update or delete. So create is like creating a document Read is read from the existing documents in the database. Update is update one or could be multiple database or not databases, but multiple documents. And delete could be a single document or multiple documents. Okay, so every API is supposed to have at least these functionalities. And now let's see which are the types of API. The first is the open API which are publicly available to the developers and other users with very less restrictions. So Google API, Facebook API uh, integration and Instagram API are examples of it. And partner API. So these APIs are shared between strategic business partners. Let's say two companies decide to do a business with each other and they want to share an inventory or they want to share the client data between each other. So this is how it happens, that they develop their own API and share the credentials with each other and they can, their databases can talk with each other. So that's called, an, that's called a partner API. Third is an internal API or a private API. So let's say one company, they don't want to share a data between different companies, but just want to keep and share it internally. So for that reason, you create an internal API. And a composite API is a group of API or interactions between different APIs. So let's say if you are booking an on an airplane website and not an air, but airline website. For example, if you go with Skyscanner.com, so Skyscanner has their own API. It interacts with different airline APIs, and this kind of complex API structure is called a composite API. Okay. So let's talk about the API and how it works in a very simple thing. So there are just two simple things. One is you make a request and second, you get a response. So, but the thing is that there is a process which is involved in it. So before dis discussing the process, let's see which are the parameters and which are the attachments you can add to the request. So request goes with two main things which are parameters and headers parameters are something which are for example if you are provided an api link to facebook so let's say it is www.facebook.com slash users so if you uh, query this uh, this url you will get a list of users let's say you don't want that you just want one particular user with a user id so that's a parameter Another example could be a last name, any field attached in that particular user. 
it is called a parameter there could be multiple queries as well so these things are supposed to be handled by API okay so let's talk about headers HTTP headers are in the most of the cases used for just one scenario which is authentication but it could either be for caching okay so we'll be discussing more about those authentications in other videos but let's see what is a typical query lifecycle so this is the actual process which happens in in between the request and a response okay so whenever you query a url it receives a request what happens is it parses the request so it has to split between the parameters the headers and validate the query is it coming from a valid source are the headers correct are the parameters correct if these good things are correct what happens it it goes and executes a query if not it's gonna throw an error or a warning or a it's basically a status which says that this is not valid but everything is fine so execute query will execute whatever things were required by the user and it will return a request it could be if there is no user it will send an empty user it is having user it will send a user object so this is the bigger picture of an api we'll be discussing about apis into details further in next any other videos okay so i would really love to get feedback from you guys that what do you feel about our video what modifications do we need and also we will be coming up with a hackathon pretty soon so do follow us on facebook and instagram and i really appreciate your time thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye